We have just completed our study of Philippians and we give thanks to God and we praise him for leading us to study such a timely book under the theme Peace and Joy in Spite of Suffering. This has been a very appropriate book to study at this time uh, but with regards to what we are going through. We are in a period of COVID-19 pandemic we started the series on the 5th of January, oblivious of what was about to be upon us. The feedback has been good because people both within the church and outside the church have said that the series has been very uplifting. It will remain in our website for those who, are, who want a refreshing of the messages or who want to direct their friends from outside to listen and be blessed. What next? We believe the Lord is leading us to focus on the person of Jesus Christ, who he is, what he does, and who he is to us. We've prayed and we believe God is leading us to study, to focus on the person of Jesus. The book of Hebrews is a profound letter in the New Testament that handles this in a, deeply way, in a deep way and in a practical way as well. He handles this deeply and practically. It is a letter that needs careful and humble study. It is deeply theological about Jesus Christ, not just confirming his deity and equality with God, but also deeply practical about his humanity. As a result, a new theme under our study of authentic Christianity is fixing our eyes on Jesus. This is taken directly from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1b and 2. I read, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the author and perfecter of our faith. We thank God here that, you know, the race is so important that we're instructed not to walk, but to run with perseverance. Because there are ups and downs in life. This might tempt us, you know, there might be obstacles to us as we navigate each day, week, and year. We see that each one is different. There are good, we have goodness, we have trials, we have difficulties. Because we're in a fallen world that is failing as well. But our Savior has marked out our race for us. And the only way we can succeed, we can get to the end, overcome, and also be a blessing to others on the way, is to fix our eyes on Jesus. Jesus is the author. He is the author of life. He is the life. He is the pioneer of our faith. He is the perfecter of our faith. Faith begins with him. Faith is in him. As it were, he will mark our script at the end. Our aim here in this theme is to really know him, to know Jesus better. Not just theologically, but practically, in order to stand firm in him to the very end. We are really going to take our time this as long as it takes. May God help us. It's good to start well. It's good to continue well. But it's very, we have to finish well. It's good to finish well. We can't say that enough. There's a lot of speculation about who wrote the book of Hebrews, the letter of Hebrews, who wrote it, and to whom it was written. We will ignore all the speculation. If the Holy Spirit considered it important, he would have made these things clear 
as with other letters in the New Testament, like John's Gospel was written by John, Matthew's Gospel was written by Matthew, Mark's Gospel was written by Mark, Luke's Gospel was written by Luke. But the most important thing here is that it's in the Bible. So it is written to all of God's people, including you and me, if we have repented of our sins and put our faith in Jesus. As we read through the book of Hebrews, a pattern emerges. There are facts about Jesus and implications for believers. There are warnings about the cost of not listening and obeying Jesus. And also there's encouragement to listen and obey, resulting in great blessings. This week we will start with just the first two verses. The title for this week is Jesus Superior in Every Way. A theme that runs through Hebrews is that Jesus is superior in every way. Is the ultimate revelation of who God is. Our main text for this week is Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. I will read. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through him he made the universe, and through whom he made the universe. We can see here that God tried to reach out in various ways, many times, and but is reaching out through the prophets, reaching out you know, finally, in these last days, as if now, rounding up now, I reach out through my son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he made the universe. Praise the Lord. How do you get to know someone better? It's through communication, verbal, nonverbal, or written. You want to know people, it means you've spent time with them. You've Related to them, you've communicated with them. God here, as we're reading in the first two verses of uh, the first chapter of Hebrews, in many ways, many times, just reaching out through the prophets, just reaching out. But these last days, switched out to us, communicated with us through his son. You know, as you get to know people, trust increases. I remembered once a church leader visited us just a few times and then he asked me why that he wanted to take an aspect of the meeting to which I said no he was perplexed and he asked why I said to him I don't know you enough I had only seen you a few times I could not attest to, your, to his character his faith or his love for God and his church I looked at him in the eye and I said how, how much about you do I know? He answered, not much. Then I said, there you go. How can a shepherd who has been entrusted with people be careless with God-given and God-building congregation? How does that happen? God here spoke many times and is still speaking today. This means God wants people to know him. See, a relationship with God is not blind, it's not flimsy. Knowing God is eternal life. In John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 3, in Jesus' prayer, he said, Now, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. God reveals himself by speaking to people. His style is to speak to individuals and instruct them 
to pass on his message to others. He has been speaking from the beginning. Some listen, many don't. Those who listen and obey him get to know him. Third point here. In the Old Testament, he spoke to his people through the prophets, men and women, through a variety of ways. Dreams, visions, thundering voice, whisper, still small voice, angelic visitations. I, in fact, I know uh, one of my fellow elders, God spoke to him many times, revealed to him how if he didn't have Jesus and repent of his sins, he saw was going to hell, going to punishment. He repented, he's living his life to please God now, it's incredible. In the Old Testament, you know, the, the way God spoke was good, fit for the purpose of leading up to God's ultimate revelation of himself which is Jesus. God has now spoken to us through his son, who is his exact representation. There is no better revelation of God. Jesus Christ is therefore the superior and final revelation of God to people. It's like, look no further. God has come as a person. This is it, God. He is superior in every way. In the reply to Philip's question of, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 8, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. It's as if Jesus was saying here, look no further. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Let me remind us again of a story we know very well. Jesus taking three of his disciples among the twelve, that's Peter, James, and John. It's like the inner circle out of the inner circle. He took them up a mountain and he was transfigured. He had his heavenly body. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes were as light, bright as light. And Moses and Elijah appeared talking to him. Wow, that was his sight. In verse 4, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. God the Father tell him, Peter, James, and John, listen to him. Wow. God is love. God, who is love, is saying, this is my son, whom I love. With him, I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Like they say, obey the last order. Who should we listen to now? To Jesus. It couldn't be clearer. We should listen to Jesus now. It is interesting to see that in verse 6, when the disciples heard God speak, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said, don't be afraid. While they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. God the Father spoke, they fell, the glory was much. They don't forget, you know, Jesus. Jesus was there talking to Elijah and Moses. But he now came to the disciples, don't be afraid. They looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Every, in every way and all professions, they say, listen to the last order. Jesus is now the one that we should listen to. He is God. He is God with us. 
The book of Hebrews presents the ministry of Jesus and uplifts Jesus to where he truly belongs. For instance, let us imagine the government's order of social distancing, which you know many of us or most all of us have been practicing. But if you imagine if someone decides not to obey and he or she goes about touching everything, coughing excessively into their hands and touching people, the effect will be disastrous in light of COVID-19 pandemic. If a few other people did that, that would be disastrous to people, uh, disastrous to the NHS, and the COVID-19 will keep spreading. This is in regard to a virus. What about sin, which is far worse than the virus? Jesus wants us to flee from sin. The consequences are eternal if we don't repent and live to please him and listen to him. If we listen to Jesus, we expect the following. First of all, if we give our lives to him, we are born again, we repent of our sins, we confess them, we repent, we are his. He blesses us with salvation and he forgives us our sins. Then if we continue to obey him and listen to him and read this word, we'll be equipped to discern and reject false religion and false religious practices that are not authentic Christianity. False religion and false religious practices take us away from God. They are not pleasing to God in every, any shape or form. They are unacceptable to God as fake money is to us. Anything false is counter to the holiness of God. Imagine having a bottle of water. When you buy a bottle of water, you know, these days from the supermarket, you keep going good, after, maybe you, you wash the bottle, as we do now, and then they uh, keep it in the fridge. Later you open it and just drink. If you imagine another bottle that looks exactly like the one you just had, but has been polluted, but looks the same from outside. Many pollutants now are colorless. Some are even tasteless, but they can kill you or they can injure you. That is bad. Things that are not authentic are not good for us. Also imagine yourself buying a house and uh, having a mortgage for 25 years, working hard, and just as you're about to finish paying for the mortgage, uh, just as you've you just finished paying the mortgage and you're expecting the papers, then you hear the news that the original seller, the person that sold it to you was fake, that the real seller was living in a different country and that the, even the solicitor that uh, did the transaction and the estate agent had folded, did no longer they are dead, they are no, no longer there. Imagine the disappointment. Now you have fake documents. Even if the person likes, now he can ask you to pay rent for 25 years. It is horrendous. Fake things and false things are dangerous and they have very bad consequences as well. Second point, if we listen to him, we will understand the rest of scripture better in their context. For instance, the book of Leviticus, which most people find difficult, will become clearer. Will become clearer. We want things to be clearer, we want to understand them clearer, and we we'll listen to Jesus. Let me tell you a story. And, uh, you know, many years ago, I went to bring solace to a woman who was 70 years old and had just lost her mom. She was the first child and she had three siblings um, who were younger than her. Just as I greeted her, she started giving orders that her mother's obituary should be published in a local newspaper. 
She told the newspaper, the newspaper advert officer that her mother's age was 150 years old. To which I interjected by saying, are you sure of what you have just said? I went on to explain to her that that meant that her mother had her at 80 years old and still went on to have three other children. There was a long silence. Then she revised the age to 96 years. In Christ, there's no white, pink, brown or black lie. Sin is sin. Sin needs to be confessed, repented of, and God will forgive. In her local culture, it was okay to show that her mother had lived very long, but it was not okay to tell a lie. Jesus lived a holy life, and by keeping her eyes on him, after repenting of her sins, the Holy Spirit will help us through the ongoing sanctification encouraging us, correcting us, disciplining us, disciplining us and leading us up unto glorification. That's what we want. We thank God that Jesus came and died for us. But apart from dying, he lived the life we should have lived, a holy life, and is helping us through his Holy Spirit. If we give our lives to him and keep our eyes on him, will be on track to glorification. As we keep our eyes on Jesus, we will become very comfortable with, say, pre um, Bible passages like, uh, Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts, and see if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24. If we feel convicted of any wrongdoing, ask for forgiveness. Once you are alive, you know, just quickly ask for forgiveness. You know, in 1 John 1, 9, we're told that if we confess our sins, if we agree with God that we are wrong, we confess to God that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Jesus wants to lead us to everlasting peace and joy. At this very time, we all await the lifting of the stay at home order. Stay home, we have been staying at home for weeks now. Some countries, it's months, and uh, we are looking, people are not going to work, business, most businesses are closed and uh, we can fear recession is coming, people want things to return to normal. But Jesus wants to lead us on the way forward, the way everlasting. Jesus wants to lead us the way everlasting. In him, we won't cut corners. We will learn to know him, he's holy, he will lead us and he will direct us. The third point, if we listen to Jesus, we stop being spiritual babies forever who are constantly needing basic information that is described in the book of Hebrews as milk. Let me paint a picture here. It is painful to imagine a healthy adult who is not physically challenged or is not emotionally challenged at all, lying around or maybe sitting at table using the feeding bottle like a baby. That is not on. And a baby is a baby. And as we grow, we learn to eat, you know, more solid food. We will be inspired to press on towards maturity as we listen to Jesus. The fourth point here, as we listen to Jesus, we will be equipped to hold firmly to the end. If you don't stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. It is vital to finish well. I close with uh, when I had uh, I was to be I was the 
third leg of a relay race, 4 by 400 meters, for those of you who like athletics. And um, that was the third leg. The first leg did well. At the second leg, the person that was going to run the second leg was about to take the baton. He stepped back. There's a line that you must not step beyond, you know, back. In, you must not step into that, beyond that line. You must not go backwards. He stepped back to take the baton. As soon as he did that, I knew that we were disqualified. And we did, we were disqualified. He stepped back. There is a line, there was a line. He was not supposed to step back. He knew the rules. It is vital to finish well. Don't step backwards. Jesus Christ will help you, will help us to keep our eyes focused and that is the way we overcome fixing our eyes on Jesus. From next week, we'll start with a four-part mini-series titled Fully God and Fully Man, based on Hebrews chapters 1 and 2. Please, I will encourage you to read through these two chapters before next Sunday. And I say God bless you all abundantly. Thank you.